Hello everyone, I'm Robert Brokamp, the Senior Advisor for the Motley Fool's Rule Your Retirement Service. As part of our Ask a Fool series, I'm going to answer a question that a reader has posted on our Facebook page. That reader is stable, and stable asks, with so many people saying that buy and hold is long dead, is it worthwhile to stick with what, with what has worked for decades? Would history repeat or rhyme this time? Well, the reason some people are saying that buy and hold is dead is because here in 2013, the S&P 500 is actually lower than where it was in the year 2000. That's not quite as bad as it sounds. If you reinvest in your dividends, you did better. But still, that doesn't sound very exciting. But for me, the real reason why buy and hold is dead is because it's not really a very good term. It sort of implies that you should never sell, and maybe you shouldn't even pay attention. And neither of those are a pretty good idea. If you're buying an individual stock, you should be buying that stock for a specific reason. And you should also have an idea of when you would sell. Perhaps because the stock didn't fulfill its promise, didn't fulfill the reasons you bought it in the first place, or you found that uh, it actually has reached the value that it thought it was worth, and it's now time to sell. If you are investing in actively managed mutual funds, you have to stay on top of those mutual fund managers. You probably know that the vast majority of them actually don't beat their relevant benchmarks. A great example of this is the Fidelity Magellan Fund, which was once run by the legendary investor Peter Lynch. Now, when Peter Lynch ran the fund, it was a great fund. But then he retired in the 90s, and since then, it has been a lousy fund. So you have to stay on top of your actively managed mutual funds to see whether the managers are doing a good job. And if not, you shouldn't hold those forever. Now, one instance in which I think buy and hold mostly applies, and that is a diversified portfolio of index funds or ETFs. We're talking about large cap funds, small caps, international, developed, emerging, real estate investment trusts. That kind of a diversified portfolio of index funds, with that, you are not betting on a single stock or a single manager. You're basically betting on the upward trajectory growth of the global economy. That is something that I think you can bet on and hold on to for a while without as much monitoring. And in fact, if you had done that since 2000, you actually would have done pretty well despite what the S&P 500 has done. But even in there, you don't really buy and hold forever. You still have to rebalance every once in a while, and you still have to maybe take back some, take down some of the risks that you're taking as you get closer to when you'll need the money, if you're going to spend it in the next three to five years, if you're getting closer to retirement. Now, people often use the term buy and hold as a contrast to the term market timing. Now, market timing means different things to different people, but it generally means people who are trying to move in and out of the market based on political events, their predictions of what interest rates will do, things like this. And the evidence is pretty clear that people stink at market timing. Uh, people are not very good at predicting how different macro events will affect the market. Trying to get in and out, in and out of the market actually destroys your wealth. So in that situation, buying and holding is certainly better than market timing. But on the whole, buy and hold is a lousy term. Make smart investments, but have an idea of when it's time to get out. And that's it from me. I'm Robert Brokamp from Motley Fool's Rule Your Retirement Service. Go to fool.com or our Facebook page to ask any other questions that you'd like to hear from.